Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, this is Andrew Shreve and welcome to an, another session. And uh, this uh, teaching today is called, Have You Put God to Work? And you can find this in written format uh, if you go to my website, andrewshreve.org, and click on Partner Letter and go to January 2012. And so uh, let's just pray and then we will open uh, this, uh, this teaching for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the Word of God. Lord, we thank you that your Word is the truth. And Lord, that your Word will bring us freedom and deliverance. You said that if we continue in your Word, then we are your disciples indeed. And we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. So Lord, we thank you that your freedom includes financial freedom, health freedom, uh, work freedom, uh, freedom from sin. Freedom uh, in our soul realm, in our emotions. Freedom in every single aspect of life. And so, Lord, we pray that this teaching this day will cause your people to come into a greater level of freedom so they can know your love and worship you and walk with you. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, I'm excited about this teaching this, uh, today. Um, the scripture we want to look at is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6. And Paul the Apostle writes, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So, uh, are you looking for more of God's power in your life? Do you want God to give you an increase? The scripture is very clear that as we plant and water the word of God in our hearts or other people's hearts, God will give increase. Paul here is talking about the Word of God. I have planted. He's talking about the Word of God. He planted the Word of God in people's hearts. Apollos watered. What did he water? The Scripture. He watered the Word of God into people's hearts. And it says, God gave the increase. So in the context of the Word of God, planting and watering the Word of God, we see that God gives increase. So if you want more, of, more increase in your life, then all you need to do is plant and water seed in your heart. If you want to increase in other people's lives or nations' lives, or if you want to impact a nation, you've got to plant and water the seed in that nation. If you want, if you want to increase in your family's life of God, you've got to plant and water the seed of the Word of God in their lives. Wherever you want increase, you must plant and water the seed because God needs the seed to do His work. God is waiting for the seed to be planted and watered so that He can act upon it. Hallelujah. So the context of this passage is planting and watering the seed of God's Word in the human heart. The principles of this passage are true whether we plant and water God's Word in someone else's heart or our own heart. So in other words, Paul is writing here about planting and watering other people's hearts, but this principle of God giving increase on seed is true if you're going to water in your own heart. And so, of course, I, I teach a lot about watering in your own heart and planting and watering the Word of God in your own heart to bring increase in your personal lives. The increase which God gives is the fruit of the particular seed that is being planted and watered. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. If you're going to, in the natural world, you plant uh, watermelon seed, you're only going to ever get watermelon fruit. You're never going to get carrots from watermelon seed. And, and so we've got to apply the rules of seed to the Word of God. And so if you want whatever you want in God's kingdom, you need to find the seed, plant and water it, and you'll get the fruit of what you plant and water. Just by, just by saying, you know, hallelujah, praise Jesus, I believe in Jesus Christ, isn't necessarily going to bring you healing because you need healing seed to bring healing. Right? So, so yes, when you accept Jesus Christ, you qualify for healing, but you're still going to need healing seed to get healing. That's why a lot of Christians aren't, aren't healed because they didn't know that they had to plant, healing, plant and water healing seed. So the fruit of the word is the manifestation of the spiritual seed. Sorry, the fruit of the word is, is the manifestation of the spiritual seed into our natural world or into our lives. So for example, you know, you've got a, a word of God, it's a spiritual seed. Well, the fruit of that spiritual seed is when it actually manifests and causes something to change in our physical life. So for example, if you had cancer and you meditated healing seed in the scripture, then the fruit of that healing seed would be the elimination of the cancer from your body and healing into your body. Hallelujah. So the scripture is very clear. God will give increase. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 7, it says, So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth increase. So we are simply laborers. 
the planting, the planter, and the waterer are, uh, uh, are nothing, if you like. It's God that gives increase. That's that's the focus. Is on the 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 glory goes to God. We are laborers. Our labor is to plant and water spiritual seed. And like this is this has been missed, I think, in Christianity generally. Most people look at Christianity as doing good deeds. Okay, that's what they see: Christ, loving people, doing good deeds. That that is a truth, right? But the primary labor of the Christian life is planting and watering seed. Now, when you plant and water seed, that will eventually manifest into doing good deeds. It will eventually manifest into loving people. But let's not put the action in front of the seed. Let's put the seed first, the action will follow. That's what God said to Joshua, to, to meditate his word day and night, that you might do. He put the meditation first, the action second. So this is, I think, uh, this is missed often in a lot of uh, Christian circles. So we plant and water spiritual seed in our own heart through the process of meditation. Okay, so preaching or teaching is what I'm doing now, which is planting into your heart. But if you want to plant into your own heart, you can listen to other people, but it's also much more powerful if you, you yourself do it through your personal meditation. And meditation is a personal thing. Okay, Medita I'm not meditating now, I'm teaching now. But the scripture talks about meditation, which is a personal thing. Uh, Psalm 1 verse 2, Joshua 1 verse 8 talks about meditation. So meditation, according to the Strong's Dictionary, speaks God's promises out loud or speaks God's words out loud, studies that those promises or that word and imagines receiving or walking in the manifestation of that word or that promise of God. So it's speak, study and imagine. Speak, speak out loud, study and imagine. So it's a repetitive. You speak the word out loud, it helps you focus on it, it helps you receive it and, and that process is studying, study the context around which the word was written and then imagine, use the imagination. This is very important. That's why God gave it to you, to bring the manifestation of His kingdom into your life. That's why He gave you an imagination. You do not have to be uh, great or special to meditate. You don't have to be a d degree educated or PhD educated to meditate. Anyone can meditate. You're meditating all the time, actually. You're daydreaming. You're, you're saying things. I listen to people, I listen to their words. They're always saying things over and over again but not usually the Word of God, but other things. They're meditating those other things, and that's what they're getting. Anybody can plant and water God's Word in their heart. The great aspect is when we plant and water God's Word, God will give increase. He's bound to that. He said He would. God will cause His Word to grow and produce in our lives. So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, that's Mark 4.26, and the seed should spring and grow, the seed should spring and grow, he knoweth not how. That's what God does. God causes the seed to spring and grow. God causes increase. God will cause that word that you meditate to grow and produce. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Okay. So there is labor and there is reward. What's the labor? The labor is the planting and watering of the word. Okay, there is a labor in the kingdom of God. Without laboring in God's word, we will not receive the fruit of the kingdom of God. How can you expect to receive fruit if you don't plant and water? You can't. You shouldn't. That would be foolishness in the natural world. But why in the spiritual world do we think it's not foolish? It is foolish to expect the fruit of the kingdom without planting and watering the seed of the word. Jesus said in Mark 4, 26, So is the kingdom of God. This is how it works. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom which responds to the laws of sowing and reaping. Okay, There are laws in God's kingdom. In the kingdom of God we sow spiritual seed, which is God's word, Mark 4.14 says that, and into spiritual ground, which is the human heart. That's what Mark 4.15 says. This is the primary labor of the kingdom of God. There is both a temporal reward in the manifestation of God's promises in this world, which improves the quality of our life. So there is a temporal reward. Okay, When you meditate the Word, you're going to get the, the manifestation of those promises into your life. Most people will probably be more encouraged about the temporal reward because they can see it, get it faster. But there is also an eternal reward. 
The eternal reward will be eternal treasures in heaven because we have, with love and faith and obedience, cooperated with the work of the Father in this world. The Father's work is to grow the seed in people's hearts. When we put the Word in our heart, we are, help, we are cooperating with the Father to grow His Word in our heart. That we're allowing Him to work in our life, if you like. That's why uh, we get reward, because we're allowing God to do what He wants to do. When we plant the seed in other people's heart, we're, we're helping God. We're allowing God, we're helping God to do what He wants to do, which is grow His seed in other people's hearts. First Corinthians, that's why there's a reward, because we're, we're, we're letting God do His will on this earth. First Corinthians 3 verse 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. So here we see that God is also a laborer. That's why I'm titled this this message, Have You Put God to Work? God is a laborer, but it says we're laborers together. Our part is to plant and water. God's part is to grow the seed. If we don't plant and water, God can't work. He wants to work and He can't because we haven't let Him. We haven't cooperated. And so have you put God to work? So we need to understand our respective responsibilities and work duties. Our job is to plant and water God's Word first in our own hearts and then in the hearts of others. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 says we have a ministry of reconciliation to reconcile people to God. Okay, So we all have to bring that Word to others but also we need to get first filled with the Word so we can be effective. Uh, Philemon 1 6 says uh, the, 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 the communication of our faith will be effective by the acknowledging, acknowledging of every good thing that's in us in Christ. So you need to acknowledge first, you need to meditate first the Word of God. So you're going to be effective then in in, in doing the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5.18. So God's work is to bring increase to the seed which we have sown and watered. If we neglect to plant and water, God will not be able to bring increase. God is waiting for the seed to be sown so He can bring increase to that seed. Many Christians are praying and, and praying, begging God to bring His power into their lives. You probably know that. You probably do that yourself. But they would be better served to use their time planning and watering God's promises in their hearts, then they would find that God's power will increase automatically into their lives. So, so they don't even have to really necessarily pray so much. You just plan and water more and that automatically uh, the kingdom of God's going to manifest in your life and you'll get what you've been praying for. So God does not lie when he says he will bring increase. Now the word says the word the word says we are God's husbandry. The word husbandry, according to Strong's dictionary, means farm. We are God's farm. So a farm is meant to produce fruit. However, no fruit is ever produced without seed. So the primary work of the Christian is to produce fruit which will come as we plant and water God's seed or God's word in our heart. This is what Mark 4.20 says. The one that hears and receives the word is the one that brings forth fruit some 30, 60 and 100 fold. The fruit is the word being received in, is, is brought forth by the word being received in our heart. So I have a question for you. Have you put God to work in your life? Have you planted and watered spiritual seed in your heart so that God can work in your life and bring His increase? God wants to bless you more. The scripture says in Psalm 35 verse 27, The Lord hath pleasure in the prosperity of His servant. He wants to prosper you. However, God is waiting for you to do your part to plant and water His spiritual seed in your heart. Now I tell you, God's spiritual seed is more powerful than any circumstance you might face. God is more powerful. And so if you might have a, a, a circumstance that you think is impossible or too hard, it's not too hard for God. You plant and water the seed and God will bring the increase. God's power will, will just blow that mountain out of the road. God's power will take away that sickness or disease. God's power will reverse and take away that poverty that you might be facing. Hallelujah. This is a powerful teaching. I hope, I hope you're getting it. You might need to listen to this video a few times. It's very powerful. God wants to bless you. But he needs your seed. Hallelujah. So let's pray with me. Father God, thank you that you are faithful to bring increase into my life when I diligently plant and water your spiritual seed, your promises in my heart. Please strengthen me. I receive strength right now from you, Lord, to meditate your spiritual seeds every day and night. Joshua 1 8, Psalm 1 2. Thank you that the time I spend meditating your seed will bring me great reward, both in this life with the manifestation of your power to improve my life and also eternal treasure in heaven. 
Please increase my revelation knowledge. I receive an understanding of these things right now. So I have the faith to understand the principles of the kingdom of God. Father, let your anointing come upon your people now. Let them know, Lord, that you've given them these precious seeds of your promises so that they can meditate these seeds, plant and water these seeds, and so they can receive the fruits of your kingdom. I pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you're looking for a good meditation book, uh, go to my website under the shopping cart and you'll see that uh, particularly the sword of the Spirit is a great overview of the best promises in the Bible which you can meditate to bring increase into your life. Bless you. I love you. And uh, bye for now.